What is up? Well, we're gonna do some work to the RSX today. I'm gonna knock out a bunch of things on it real quick before we get started on lowering it. I'm gonna be lowering it on some uh, tin coil overs later on in the next video after this. Should be real fun. Um, it won't be a GoPro video like this. Uh, this one is just, I need to get this work done on this car first and then we're gonna lower it. So basically today we're gonna knock out this little gasket that's on the head behind the power steering pump and gonna do an AC compressor. Um, if you check out my last video, I went ahead and diagnosed the AC system and actually the compressor clutch was on his way out, but went ahead and got a whole new compressor. So if you have an RSX or an EP3, the AC compressor, you know, it's located way down there. It's really hard to get to. Pretty much you need to take off this piece of the car here. So what I'm gonna do as far as making this easier to film, is I think I'm actually gonna take the front bumper off and possibly that headlight just so I can get the camera in there a little bit better. You can actually see what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, I figured I'll just go ahead and knock all this out anyway because I got to take the belt off and uh, replace the gasket that's down there. Replace this guy because it's leaking at the shaft. And uh, we'll just knock all this out in one big fat piece. Um, before you even get started with the AC compressor, if it still has refrigerant in it, take it, go have it pulled out. So with the Honda, pretty much everything is going to be 10 millimeter for the most part. Uh, right here with the power steering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get some things out of the way and then remove the belt. I have a really big habit of putting all my nuts and bolts kind of back where they go. Um, that just makes things easier later on. And you got to put everything back. But I just want to get as much stuff out of my face as I can. Alright, so the tensioner here is just a 14. I'm going to loosen this guy up. Having some long wrenches really helps out with this. I actually make a tool that will it's made for doing these belts like this to give you more leverage, but you can get away with just using wrenches. And we're looking at the power steering pump, we're looking at some 12 millimeter bolts right here. So without the headlight there, it allows you to do some trick stuff like this right here. That's a nice little simpler. Pump is not loose. It's a good time to change the belt. Good time to change the tensioner. Okay. So I'm not gonna do that at this moment. Right now, we're just gonna dig down and make some room. Alright, so we're gonna remove the tensioner now. And we're gonna have to remove this motor mount bracket here. So we're gonna support the engine with the jack and a wooden block. Pick it up a little bit, take this off, pull that guy out. Let me that'll allow me to change this gasket real quick. I won't do that anyways because I'm gonna need to move the engine up and down anyways to get the compressor out. It's gonna make it easier to get to some of the bolts and things later on. So in a lot of other videos, a lot of people ask me if this is okay to actually jack up an engine by the oil pan. And it is, as long as you use a block of wood underneath it, the pan will be fine. As long as the block of wood isn't super duper small, like, like this, it's gotta be a little bigger than this, okay? And it doesn't need to be that big, but it will be fine. So you can see how greasy it is right now, because you got some leaks. This thing does have a bunch of miles on it, 220 something. Alright, go ahead and remove this guy. It's a little soft, it's gonna be okay. All right, got him out of the way. All right, so to actually get the tensioner out, there's a 12 millimeter here and there's one right here and it's pretty difficult to get to. So removing the, mount, the motor mount, like so what I'm gonna do, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just remove the bracket off, off here. And to do that, I'm gonna have to move the motor mount. This is a good time to replace the motor mount, but 
Um, it's just going to make it easier because there's three bolts that go this way into the head. Um, and they're kind of difficult to remove with this in the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and just pull it out. Just to make it easier. And kind of clean that area up because it is kind of gross. Don't want to sit on that. All right, so now, all right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get to the 12 millimeter that's down here underneath the tensioner. And there we have it. Bam. Tensioner should come right out. All right, so since I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the gasket here. Because what happens is it's just leaking. It's going that way, it's going this way. Two 10 millimeters. All right, so you can see that it has a little bit of debris. There's a little bit of debris up in here, that's good. This thing, that's what it's made to do, is filter out any debris that can get into the head or into the VTUX uh, system. Um, but what happens is why this actually leaks is because this rubber gets hard after time. And this car being as old as it is, it's definitely time for all the rubber to start taking a dump and start leaking everywhere. But basically it just gets hard and it shrinks and then you end up with leaks everywhere. And this is just one of them. Now you can also get a check engine light from this filter here if it gets filled up and the flow of oil um, gets impeded, it'll throw a check engine light. So these gaskets usually come in a three piece set where you get this guy, the VTX solenoid and the pressure surge solenoid. They're like, eight dollars for the whole thing six dollars i'll leave a link down in the description box um not really a big deal but there we go all right no rtv no none of that put it right back on there nice and clean and i'm just gonna go a little hand tight with it and it will be good to go For 220,000 miles, still sounds pretty good. All right, so we got the motor mount bracket out of the way. That's so I can move the motor up and down. Got the jack underneath it with the block of wood. Um, that's gonna allow me to get to the bolts down there for the compressor pretty easily. Gonna go ahead and loosen this guy up. We just have to loosen it. We don't have to, don't have to totally take it off. Need to get rid of the coolant bottle. These are just tens. Everything's tens. So, well, along with this core piece here, it actually goes all the way down to the lower core support down there. We're gonna have to loosen that also. So if you look right here, there's this 10 millimeter here. We gotta get rid of this guy. So this is normally all covered up with these plastic shields. But life is easy now. Up there. Alright, so let's go over this. Kind of up here. Not gonna disconnect anything. Probably make give myself a little bit more room. Get rid of some of these wire retainers. Just squish them. Free up a little bit. Okay. The coolant bottle's gotta go. 10 millimeter here. So we got one here, disconnect the line, and then we got one really crappy one that's down at the bottom, at the very bottom of the bottle down here. Oh, it's kind of hard to film that, but it's down here at the bottom, okay? Having some type of flexible ratchet will definitely make things a little easier. And again, me taking the headlight out, I'm able to do things like this right here. Stick my hand in there. It's really easy actually just to take the headlight out. Um, you don't risk the chance of scratching it like that or scratching the bumper if you just remove it. It gives you a chance to clean anything, replace anything that needs to. Um, and it makes things actually, you know, it might seem like you're doing more work, but 
you're not struggling nearly as hard. Right, so yeah, it's just working with technicians, I've seen them just completely not want to take things apart. And they just struggle all day with it. But there we go with that. Let's put this off to the side. Don't want to spill it. Now we can actually just remove the fan and this will give us even more room. Uh, you got a 10 here and a 10 here and there's gonna be a connector down there. We're gonna have to disconnect also. So if we look, the connector, oh, this came undone. <laughs> It was actually, it was barely even hanging on for some reason down there. Someone's already been on there, but there is a connector down there. There we go. This is what it looks like here. There's the plug at the bottom right there. And there's a little retainer for the compressor uh, harness right there that you're gonna have to mess with. All right, so now look down there. You got both compressor lines here, the low side and the high side, and the fittings on the compressor. It's gonna be some 10 millimeters. We're gonna go ahead and take those off and um, move the lines out of the way just be careful because there will be some oil coming out of it so this thing's gonna start getting kind of messy A little bit of corrosion with that one, you can see. I was starting to kind of cross thread that guy. I'm gonna have to fix this. Here's one line, that's your both side there. Gonna need to replace these O rings with some new ones. Some, comp some, some compressors come with them, some of them don't. There we go with that one. Same thing here, there's an the O-ring here. You're gonna need to replace that one, you have to. All right. All right, so this is what we're looking at down there. You got the low side port and the high side port. These are just plugs in here. You got the plug here for the coil. All right, looking good, looking good. But what holds this against the motor is you have some bolts here and bolts here, okay? And we can actually see from the top, we can see these two right here. They're right there. Don't do these first, let's do the bottom ones first and then go after these. You always want to do the hardest ones first, okay? If we take these out and then go after these, uh, the weight of the compressor is gonna make it more difficult under the car to get these out. So, start at the bottom and go to the top. All right, so under the car, the compressor right here, the bolts at the bottom will actually run right into the subframe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jack up the motor enough to where the bolts, uh, we can get to the bolts a little bit easier. Um, it's pretty much a must, okay? So now the, now the motor's up high enough where we can actually see the bolts from right here. So we're gonna go at the bottom ones from this direction right here. All right, you're gonna need an extension and a 12 millimeter. This one's just caked with oil and grease and dirt. Both of the bolts, that one will come out. This one right here won't come out all the way until you loosen it all up. Mm. Then we can just pull this sucker right out. Pull it right out through here. There we go. There we go, this is the old yucky one. All right, there we go, check it out. Brand new one, old one. Slap this guy back in there real quick. All right, so we're gonna get this guy. We're gonna stick this bottom one in now, because it's kind of difficult to do back there. The one that's closer to the pulley here. Work our way down there. Just try not to pop the radiator open. And again, not having the bumper and stuff makes it a little easier. Get her kind of close, put the bolts in. 
So we get all four of these guys in here nice and loose, get them started, and then tighten them all down. But you want them loose so you can kind of adjust the compressor around, especially if it's aftermarket, because it's not going to be exactly the same as your factory one. So there's a little bit of difference with the aftermarket. All right, so in the beginning of the video, I really didn't go over the clutch harness here, but it's just connected. It's actually just connected right there at the bottom. You can get to it from underneath the car. Uh, sorry about that. But the next step is to go ahead and replace the O-rings on the lines right here. O-ring kit, uh, not too expensive. I think these are like 10 bucks and you get every single O-ring you're ever gonna need to do AC work or any type of seals. Any type of hydraulic work, we got it right. Now when we put one of these new ones on here, I'm gonna take some PAG oil and I'm gonna put it on the seal. So when we put it back on the compressor, it doesn't rip it, that's a must. Uh, before we do that, um, a lot of times with new compressors, they don't have any oil in them. You're gonna to wanna to put some PAG oil in it. Uh, I don't really know how much this one calls for, but you don't have to do this step if you're taking your car to have the refrigerant put back into the system, okay, if you take it somewhere, because they're gonna evacuate it again, they're gonna run a vacuum on it, and you just need to tell them that you didn't put any oil in the compressor, that you need to put oil in the compressor, and their machine that they're using will inject it in there, and they'll inject the right amount, and they'll inject the right amount of refrigerant also. But if you're not gonna do that, if you're gonna do it yourself, you have the stuff to kinda of do it yourself, where you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just pour some uh, some oil right down in the compressor and at least get some in there. Okay, the system does have oil in it, but you're gonna to wanna to put some in the compressor if you're charging it yourself. Got oil on the seals. All right, well, I got most of it all back together. Still on the front bumper on there. But I do have a vacuum pump and a set of gauges. Right now I'm pulling some vacuum on it and checking for leaks. What the vacuum does, it actually removes any moisture from the system. Uh, the system automatically starts drawing the moisture as soon as you open it up. Go and turn that off real quick. But this is a way to check for leaks right here, and what we're looking for is we're looking for vacuum right here. And I pulled vacuum on it for about 20 minutes so far, and if this gauge starts to move, okay, it probably will move to about 20 or 15. But if it gets any lower than that, that means there's a little leak in the system that I need to go back and check my connections. But I'm pretty confident that uh, we're in good shape here. And after that, we'll go ahead and just charge it up. Looks like we're getting around 55 degrees. We'll get a little bit cooler as we drive it around. But man, this is perfect timing because it's the middle of summer and it's super hot. It's nice to have a working air conditioner again. But yeah, Acura's coming out good. All right, let's go take this thing for a test drive.